I'll show you I can easily clean up your studio backdrops when it comes to Photoshop. And in case you want to follow along with this tutorial, it's going to be very easy to follow along. And we are not going to be using any kind of artificial intelligence or AI as it is of late. So I'll show you I can do this with any kind of Photoshop. So for this, you are simply going to come to the image after importing it and duplicate the background there by pressing Ctrl J or you can use Command J on the keyboard. And after creating a copy from the background layer, you are simply going to come and get the spot healing brush tool. We are basically going to do, to do this in the traditional way. So after getting the spot healing brush tool, make sure the mode is set to normal and content, content aware is checked. And you can either decide to choose sample all layers or leave it unchecked. So start dabbing, left click and dab over the distractions in the image. So make sure to keep away from the clicking near the subject in this case so i'll click over those paper backdrops in the background don't mind if at all some are left out like i said keep eye from painting close to the subject layer so i'll paint quickly like this and by just doing that you can see that the background is looking a little bit cleaner but don't mind if at all it is leaving this kind of marks within the background itself so i'll just come and try to eliminate it so click or dab over it and you can see it is doing a fair job but we're going to be fine tuning this later on in this very video so after doing this or removing those distractions you can see sometimes it tries to sample from the subject layer but we just wanted to get a starting point so after it has done this the next point is going to be creating even skin color and removing this background folds or wrinkles so how we're going to create a seamless color or uniform color come to where you see select and come to subject so for this photoshop is going to try to automatically help us select the subject and as you can see it has done a pretty nice job selecting around the subject but we don't want to work on the subject for this we simply want to work on the background and refine or fine tune the background layer itself so just come to select and you come to inverse so when you select inverse it's going to automatically select the inverse of the subject or the opposite of the subject which is the background which we want to fine tune so after it has done this we are going to come and get the brush tool right click under the brushes get the brush tool and for the settings make sure it is a soft round brush the mode is normal and for the opacity we are going to be using an opacity of about 60 percent and the flow of 100 percent so after doing this, we are just going to zoom in slightly. So after zooming in, we just want to sample color and paint it on the background. So just want to sample color and paint it on the background itself. So we have to keep on sampling from different areas. So how are we going to copy or sample that color? Hold down the option key on the keyboard in case you're using Mac. Then for Windows, it's alternate option and left click to sample a color. And after sampling that color, start painting over the background so sample from this other area so you you have to sample from different areas because the background usually has different gradients or the colors won't be as uniform because when you create a kind of uniform skin or uniform background it means that sometimes it may look unnatural or unrealistic so i'll sample from right here on the leg and paint right there in that area and by just doing this, you can see the background is getting to look better. Just like that. And you can see it is now getting to look smoother than where we started. So I'll sample from this area and paint, remove those folds and wrinkles. But this is not all for this kind of process because we later on have to remove the dirt particles from this part of the image or this part of the photo. So option and paint once again on the upper part of the image or the upper part of the background so i'm just going to come and try to paint right here down so option and paint on that fold so to remove this kind of dirty area i'll reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard or the square bracket keys on the keyboard hold down the option key on the keyboard and sample a color nearby that is clean so option and i'll sample this clean color and try to paint over the dirt area so 
just be careful with this so for the shadow part sample from the shadow area and paint on where the shadow is and sample from these other colors and try to paint on this that area just like that you can see the dirt is going to be eliminated from the subject but as you're painting ensure that or make sure that you keep away from painting very very close to the subject because sometimes it can create unnatural colors in some particular or specific areas of the image so i'll just keep on sampling you can see i keep on holding down the option button or the alternate button and left clicking to sample color because these dirt areas are located in areas that have different lighting conditions so i'll just paint like that so to remove that fold just like that so after i have uh, eliminated the dirt and the fold in the image i'll simply fine tune this so just come and get the mixer brush tool and for the mixer brush tool its work is to blend and mix the uneven skin color or some of the patches that may have remained in this very image or in this very photo so for the mixer brush tool the settings hardness set to zero soft round brush is selected then clean brush is selected and the second option that says clean brush after each stroke is also selected the reason for doing this is because as we are trying to blend different colors of the background we don't want the brush to carry the previous color to a new area that is why you have chosen this second option that is clean brush after each stroke so photoshop is going to automatically clean the brush for us as we are heading to paint on a brand new area so we're just going to start painting and the weight is going to be 9 load 75 mix 90 flat 100 percent and after doing this we're just going to start evening out the transitions or the tones of this very background so slightly increase on the brush and remove a fold paint in the opposite direction of where that fold is or that uneven color is so for example this color is moving in this direction you can see my brush so i'll move the brush in an up and down kind of direction to try to blend it well into the overall image so i'll do this for the rest of the folds or wrinkles that may have remained in the image so i'll slightly zoom in so for the dark areas or the shadows you only have to blend the shadows alone just like that and for the dark areas that may have remained so as you're doing all this make sure that you don't eliminate the natural shadow that was existing as a result of your subject so make sure you are careful with the process so I'll paint quickly and try to delete or blend the colors within the image so you can see right now the background looks nice and seamless so in order to make the background even look better you can even try to manipulate or change the color of the background so before after so in order to change the background color we are simply going to press ctrl d or you can use command d on the keyboard to deactivate the active selection in this case so after deactivating the active selection you're just going to come to filter then come to where you see camera raw filter so in camera raw you're just going to scroll down and since this background is blue you can just scroll down and come to the color mixer color mixer basically handles or deals with hue saturation and luminance hue is changing a color saturation is the intensity of a color luminous is how bright or how dark you want a color to be in the photo that you're trying to edit so for this case what do we want to do we simply want to change the color of the blue so just come to hues remember hue deals with changing a color so i'll come to the blues in this case you can see by moving this to the right hand side we are making the blues of the image purple and by moving this towards the left hand side we shall be making the blues even aqua in color so depending on what you want to go in for or depending on the color that you want to go in for as a photographer that is what you have to go for so for this case i'll simply come because i just want a slight aqua look to the background i feel like this is okay and you can even play around with the luminance by simply slightly darkening the background just like that of the blue color so you can see the before and after for our color mixer before and after 
click OK and go back to Photoshop. So in case you want to even manipulate this further and create a more appealing kind of result so that the background doesn't look all that plain, this is what you have to do. We are just going to come and select the subject once again. And once the subject has been selected, we're just going to wait for Photoshop to select the subject. Then simply invert the or select the inverse, which is the background layer. Then you're going to come to the brushes, get the normal brush tool, and simply select the hard round brush. So when the hard round brush has been selected, you're going to be using an opacity and a flow of 100%. Then for this, just increase on the size of the brush and sample a color on the background. Just hold down the option key on the keyboard and left click to sample that color. So what we want to do, we just want a brighter tone of the background so that it can be as if we are creating a snort kind of effect. So I'm just going to move this towards the bright area just like that and try to dab over. Yeah, I just want to dab over the background. So to dab, simply left click just like that. And you can see the background has gotten to look even better than what it looked like before. And after that, press Ctrl D or you can use Command D to deselect active selection. So you can see how we have been able to manipulate the background from looking like this to looking like this when it comes to Photoshop. You can see the before after before after before after so this is how you can easily clean up and make your studio backdrops even better when it comes to photoshop and in case you have enjoyed this video don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you are not a subscriber to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating